Folks, we're going to make a wee start tonight. It is good to see you all here, and we welcome you in the Savior's name. Now, it's all a bit strange, so it is, and believe you me, it's uh, strange for us all and difficult in these days in which we live. But we do thank you for coming, and we do welcome you all in the Savior's name. Now, at the very end, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to ask you just to remain in your seat at the end when the meeting is over, and then the stewards will show you uh, uh, to the door. They'll, they'll go row by row out. It's just a really a trial run uh, for the Sunday in a couple of weeks' time when we do meet. Obviously, on the Sunday, there's going to be a bigger crowd here, so it's going to be a wee bit more difficult. But I think the main thing is to keep everybody safe as possible. That's the idea of all this self-distancing. And it's important not only in the church, but also uh, in the car park as well. Uh, also remember that uh, it's important just when you're going out row by row to wait till the steward guides you out and then just go straight to your car and, and straight home again. So we can sort of try and keep to these, keep to these rules and regulations just to keep everybody, everybody as safe as possible. But let's all unite our hearts together in prayer and let's seek the Lord's face and let's pray that the Lord will come and be with us tonight and bless His Word to all of our souls. Our loving Father in heaven, we do thank Thee and praise Thee for gathering us into God's house once again this evening. We thank Thee, Lord, for the way that You have kept Your hand upon us over these past months. And O oh God, we pray that tonight again as we meet together that we might know a real sense of Thy presence. Bless every head bowed in Your presence, Lord. We do pray, O God, that even this night that the Word of God would come with freshness to our hearts and to our souls. And we pray, Lord, that we might leave God's house tonight saying it was good to be here, for it was here where we met afresh with the Lord. We do pray, Lord, that You would remember our land today. O God, send us a breath of revival. We recognize, Lord, that's what we need more than anything. Oh, God, come and revive our hearts, revive our families, revive our churches, revive, Lord, this land of ours. We pray, oh, God, that you would be pleased to open up the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing. There would not be room enough to receive it. Lord, we pray that you would be pleased now to draw spicily near to our hearts. Remember those who would love to be here but are not able we commit them to Thee. Remember the sick of our congregation. Remember those, Lord, that need that special touch from Thee physically. And we pray, O God, that You would raise them to full health and strength again. And, O God, we pray that over this holiday time that You would refresh us, keep us safe, Lord. O God, keep every family in our congregation safe in these days. And, Lord, be very careful to give to Thee the praise, the glory and every bit of the honor. So, bless us now, Lord. Come and meet with us, even, Lord, as we turn to the precious Word of God. And then when we come to our time of prayer, Lord, come, Lord, and uh, meet with us, Lord, around the throne of grace. And, Lord, be very careful to praise Thee. In Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Please turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. There's no doubt that we're living in strange days. And indeed, I believe we can say hard days as far as the work of God is concerned. Indeed, as we look and consider the spiritual state of our land and the spiritual state of the church, there's much, there's much to discourage even the saints of God. In such circumstances, it would be easy to grow weary. It would be very easy to give up, to turn back, and many do and many have, even down through the history of the church when hard times have come. And even in this day and age in which we live, there are many deeply discouraged. But, child of God, giving up is not what the Lord, of course, wants us to do. The Lord Jesus Christ said in one occasion, him that putteth his hand to the plow and looketh back is not fit for the kingdom of God. So, giving up and turning back is not an option 
for you and I tonight who are saved and who are born again of the Spirit of God. But what are we to do when times are hard and difficult in the work of God and in our Christian lives? Well, God, I believe, gives us the answer in His precious Word, and that's the wonderful thing about the Bible. The Bible has always got the answer. And especially in the book of Hebrews, when we read this wonderful book in the canon of Scriptures, the Lord gives us instruction what you and I, child of God, must do when times are hard and times are difficult in our Christian lives and in the work of God as a whole. And very simply, uh, tonight I want to draw your attention to what the Lord would say to us tonight in times of difficulty and in times when our backs are against the wall in the Christian life. And I want you to notice very simply a number of things here. And I'm going to be very brief tonight. As we announced last week, over the summertime, we're just keeping the prayer meetings to the hour. So we'll be brief in our preaching this evening again, and then we'll get down to our time of prayer just in a few moments' time. But I want you to take a look, first of all, at Hebrews chapter 10 and the verse 23. The first thing you'll notice here, it says, let us hold fast. I want you to underline especially those four words in the text. But the whole text is a wonderful verse of Scripture. Verse 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised in the time of trouble, in the time of distress, when things are hard and difficult in the Christian life and in the Christian, in Christian service, we are not to let go. We are not to give up. We are to hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Why? Well, the answer is given in the text, for He is faithful that promised. My, is not that a wonderful text of Scripture tonight? Wonderful text to encourage us in our walk with God, even in this 21st century in which we live. And what has God promised? Well, I'm sure that you could quote the promises of God in the Bible just as well as I can quote them. He has promised that He will give us strength in our time of need. He has promised that He will never leave us nor forsake us. He has promised that He will keep us as the apple of His eye. And when times are hard, we are not to waver. Rather, we are to continue to trust the promises of Christ our Savior. We are to hold fast to the promises of Christ. This phrase, and I'm sure that you've read this verse many times before, uh, but this phrase, to hold fast, it literally means to hold down or to hold thoroughly. So you have the picture there of a storm, a great storm. And in the midst of this storm, everything is being blown away. Everything is being tossed to and fro. But the picture is this, that when the storms come in the Christian life, that the child of God, instead of being tossed about with every wind of doctrine, we are to hold fast, we are to hold down, we are to hold thoroughly. In other words, we are not to doubt the promises of God when the times are hard. Our faith in the promises of God should get stronger when the hard times come. And I'm sure you have proven that in your Christian life many, many times. And maybe there's someone here tonight, and you're going through a time of difficulty, hard days, and perhaps your back is against the wall. Well, here's a word in season for you. Indeed, a word in season for each and every one of us in the midst of the trials of life when things are hard and difficult. The Lord tells us here, let us hold fast. We're all familiar with that lovely hymn, 
When you feel weakest, dangers surround, subtle temptations, troubles abound. Nothing seems hopeful, nothing seems glad. All is despairing, even time sad. And then the chorus, keep on believing. Jesus is near. Keep on believing. There's nothing to fear. Keep on believing. This is the way. Faith in the night as well as the day. And I pray tonight that the Lord will take His Word and write it upon our hearts, and that we will uh, meditate upon this text of Scripture afresh, and that the Lord will bless us through us. Thank God the Lord has promised, even in the midst of the storm, to give us strength and to keep us keep us near to Him. But I want you to turn over, turn over to Hebrews chapter 10 for a moment, and you'll notice something else. Take a look there at verse 22 of the chapter now, and just the verse before that, and you'll see that not only are we to hold fast, let us hold fast, and you'll notice that Paul here, I mean, I believe that Paul was the author of the book of Hebrews. Paul here is speaking to the Christian and he's speaking to himself because he includes himself in that us. Let us hold fast. But then you'll notice, secondly, he says, let us draw near. Look what it says in verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Isn't that a lovely little phrase at the beginning of verse 22? Let us draw near. When times are hard, let us draw near to God. Usually when there's a problem, we draw back. It's not right. Instead of seeking God, we stop seeking God because we focus on the problem instead of focusing on the one who can solve the problem. And of course, we have all been guilty of that preacher included when our backs have been against the wall, when we have come into a hard uh, time in our Christian experience, when things haven't been going so well, uh, instead of seeking the face of God and drawing near to the Lord, as I've said, we draw back. But here the Apostle Paul gives us this instruction, when the times are difficult, we are to draw near. Let us draw near. There's a, wonderful, there's a wonderful example of this in the life of Abraham. Keep your hands there in Hebrews chapter 10, and turn over just for a moment to Genesis chapter 18. Now, it's a familiar passage of Scripture. Here, the Lord is coming to Abraham, and uh, He's coming to reveal to Abraham that He's going to destroy the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And of course, uh, Lot and his family were in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. So, a problem arose in the family of Abraham, and it was a very serious problem. And we can, we can see the problem uh, in verse 17 of Genesis 18. Take a look at it there. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? What was He going to do? He was going to destroy the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sin. And as we've already emphasized, this was a problem to Abraham, but because, of course, as we've already emphasized, and you know the story well, Lot was in the cities. But notice, and this is the point I want to make, I want you to notice what Abraham did at this point, what he did. Look at verse 22, and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Now, you'll be aware that there were three men, one of them, what I believe, the Son of God. I believe this is one of the Old Testament Christophanies that we have often spoken about, an Old Testament appearance of the second person in the Holy Trinity, because it says that two of these men, eh, they went towards Sodom. Um, but look what it says about the third man. It says, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Look what it says in verse 23. And Abraham drew near and said, wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Notice what it says. Abraham 
drew near. He drew near. Oh, child of God, in the midst of the difficulty, in the problem, when the trial comes, that's what we need to do. Not only do we need to hold fast, but we need to draw near. In Psalm 73, verse 28, it says, But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all thy works. That's a wonderful text of Scripture, the words of the psalmist. And then James says, in James 4, verse 8, verse 8, Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Oh, child of God, if there's a day and age when you and I need to draw near to God, surely it's this day in which we live. And no matter what the problem is or the difficulty is in our Christian lives or in the work of God as a whole, there's nothing better that the child of God can do and the people of God can do than to draw nigh to God. Draw nigh to God. And, of course, that's why we've come together here tonight to draw nigh to God, to pray that the Lord will come and bless in our lives and in our families and in our churches and in our land. And oh, how our land needs a a spiritual awakening even in these days in which we live. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 4 for a moment. In this text, we see the first two points that I have made, and they're brought together this point of let us hold fast and let us draw near. You can see it all coming together here in Hebrews chapter 4. Look what it says in verse 14. Again, they're familiar words, I'm sure, to most of us. But look at verse 14. Seeing then, Hebrews 4, seeing then that we have a, we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. So there's the first point I made. Let us hold fast our profession. Why? Because we serve a living Savior, one who keeps His promises. Then look at verse 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Look at verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. There we have the coming and drawing nigh to God, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. What do we do when trials come? What do we do when a problem arises, whether in our families or in the country or in the church? We hold fast. We don't let go of the promises of God. Indeed, that's the time we plead them even more. And then we draw near. We draw near because we recognize that The Lord is the only one who can hear our prayer and hear our cry. But turn over to Hebrews chapter 6. There's something else I want you to notice here. I want you to notice, take a look with me there at verse 1 of Hebrews chapter 6. And you'll notice, thirdly, let us go on. It says here, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Underline that little phrase, let us go on. When the work of God gets hard, when our Christian lives get difficult, when our backs are against the wall, when we come into hard times, what are we to do We're to go on. We're not to go back. We're not to stand still. We are to go on. Let us go on growing in grace. Let us go on serving the Lord. Let us go on doing what God has called us to do. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, let us go forward. Go forward. Of course, Sometimes that can be the hardest time to go forward. It's easy to go forward and to go on when everything's going well, when there's no problems or difficulties in our Christian lives, when the times are easy. It's easy to to go on in those times. But, child of God, you know, and many of you have been saved more years than me. You know that that's not life. That's, That's not the way the Christian life is because 
Christian life as a battle, a spiritual battle that we're in day by day. And once you get over one conflict, then the next conflict comes. Once you get over one problem, the next problem comes. Once you get through one trial, the next trial comes. What are we to do? We're to hold fast. Let us hold fast. We're to draw near. Let us draw near. But we're to go on. Let us go on. Turn over just for a moment to Exodus chapter 14. And with this, we'll finish and get down to our time of prayer. When the children of Israel were faced with a great problem, they didn't know what to do. But in the midst of their great problem, God gave them a command. Now, they had just left Egypt, and when they were leaving Egypt, everything seemed to be going so well. They were singing and praising the Lord for His redemption and for His hand upon them and delivering them from the hands of the Egyptian. But of course, very soon, the first obstacle came their way, and that was the Red Sea. What were they going to do when they got to the Red Sea? And of course, if that was bad enough, if that wasn't bad enough, Pharaoh's army was marching down behind them. Pharaoh had decided, well, he shouldn't have let the children of Israel go. Now he's going to, he's going to kill them. He's going to, he has sent his armies out to slay them. But what were they going to do? And you know, the, the thing is this, that when this first problem arose, they started to murmur and they started to complain. But you'll notice what the Lord said to them in verse 15 there. Look at Exodus 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. That they go forward. You know, child of God, it took faith for them to go forward. It took faith. And it took courage. And it took resolve but they did go forward. And of course, we know the story. The Lord wrought a mighty miracle, and He opened up the Red Sea. And of course, when you study the history of the children of Israel in the wilderness, every problem that arose, every difficulty that arose, uh, the Lord solved. The Lord solved every problem. And thank God, there's a wonderful truth there. No matter what we have to face, in life, the Lord will solve the problem. The Lord will solve the difficulty. The Lord will bring us through the trial. But of course, uh, the trial has to go, uh, we have to go through the trial. And that's a part of the Christian life. But what, we, what do we do when times are hard? And uh, it, it has been hard over these past three months in so many different ways. And I know that Many of you, indeed all of you, have found it difficult in some way, but the Lord has brought us back into God's house again, and we thank the Lord for that. And, but let us realize that even when we have to face all these difficulties and all these trials, let us hold fast, and let us draw near, and let us go on. And let us keep trusting the Lord, because I believe the end is not yet, and the best has still to be. And thank God, no matter what the problem may be, uh, and the trial may be in our Christian lives, and the work of God as a whole, isn't it wonderful to know that the Lord is in control? And that's the wonderful truth. When we study the history of God's people, in the Bible and even in the history of God's people in church history, the Lord has always been in control. And it reminds us of that little verse, indeed the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, when He said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. So what do we do when times are hard? What do we do when our back's against the wall? Well, let us hold fast let us draw near, and let us go on. And the Lord will bless us, I believe, in the days that lie ahead.
May God bless His Word to all of our hearts tonight. That's all, boy, just in a wee word of prayer. Father in heaven, we do thank Thee for all Thy mercies to us tonight. And we thank Thee, Lord, for the Word of God to our souls, Lord. This very simple Word, we thank Thee for the encouragement that has been to our own hearts, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that it might encourage every saint that's here this evening. And we pray, Lord, that You would come and fill us each one with Thy gracious, gracious Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank Thee for saving us and redeeming us for time and for eternity. And, O oh God, we pray tonight as we come to prayer that You would give us the spirit of prayer and the spirit of intercession. For in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen.